Yes, my peeps, I'm still on the issue of knowing God for yourself. It is important to know God. We are all made in God's image, in His likeness, created in His image. So we need to know who God is and what God is about. Some people look upon a pigeon and say, God, that. Some people look upon a dog and say, God, that. Some people look at the sky and say, see God, there. Some people look at the sun and say, that's God. And in many ways, they are not wrong because when I read the Bible, I've been reading the Bible from cover to cover all these years. And in Genesis 1, chapter 1, God appeared as a spirit hovering over the water when the whole place was dark. The spirit, you know, they say God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Him appeared to Moses as a burning bush. Moses stood afar and him saw a bush was burning bright. And when him climbed up there, God was a consuming fire. God appeared to the Israelites as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God is omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. Nobody in the world no powerful like God. He's omnipresent. He can be here in England, there in Jamaica, over the South Africa. God can be 100 place one time. So nobody can compare yourself to God. So when you see people put God in a little box and say God is ill, Selassie, or God is a tree or god is god is something else no god can be anything god appears as a whirlwind to job in the book of job throughout the 66 book of the bible god appeared to a whole heap of things to a whole heap of different people when paul was beating the christians and dragging them out of church god appeared to paul as a bright shining light and blind him eye them the way all the light bright, it blind Paul's eyes. His name was Saul at the time, and obviously he got a name change to Paul when he got he got he repented of his sins and all that. So don't let anybody tell you that God is this or God is that, because God appeared to different people in different ways. God is a spirit. And if you really want to know God, God says, seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added. Seek don't mean to go and search because God is not lost. It is simple saying to pursue God with all our hearts and he will abide with us. Psalm 91 is a powerful psalm. He will dwell in the secret place of the most i shall abide under the shadow of the almighty you understand and god is represented in most of the scriptures so when i hear people talking about who write the bible and who write the bible they need to go back into history because the bible is a history book as well i mean there was a man called william tyndale in the early 16th century he interpreted the Bible from, what was it, Latin or Hebrew, one of them. Anyway, he interpreted the Bible into English. And they burned him at the stake because he had no right. He had no right. The book, the Bible was not a common book back in them those times. It was for the elites. Yes, you understand. And there's another one called Martin Luther King. Not the black Martin Luther King, but the white Martin Luther King that he translated. He translated the Old Testament and William Tyndale translated the New Testament. I'm getting a bit rusty on my history where the Bible is concerned because I've been so taken up with other things. But seek first the kingdom of God. In order to know God is ABC, accept him in your life, accept him, know who he is, know who God is, because God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship in spirit and truth, believe in the Lord with all your heart, and you will be saved.
Confess your sins, because that's important. Confess your sins, because God can't dwell in a corrupted heart. Our hearts have to be clean and pure for the good Lord to dwell. So know God for yourself. Know the Spirit of God for yourself. Otherwise, the people of the world, the people of the world will lead you astray. It's simple as that. Have a blessed day. Keep subscribe. Keep subscribing. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. Okay.